live from Nashville, Tennessee. This is Peter Rosenberger. This is Hope for the Caregiver. This is the nation's number one show for the family caregiver. Now think about that. Think about how many people are doing this. Think about all the folks that are putting themselves between a vulnerable loved one and even worse disaster. How in the world do you help those folks? What does it even look like? Why would we do it? Why is that even important? These are the things that this show covers because let me tell you something. There are more than 65 million Americans out there right now who are putting themselves between a vulnerable loved one and even worse disaster. Somebody who is impaired, somebody who has something going on. I mean, let's go through the list. You got a child with special needs. All right. You got a child uh, that dealing with autism or, or cerebral palsy or something. Then you've got family members that have a traumatic event or an accident or something. In my case, uh, my wife had a traumatic car wreck, car wreck when she was uh, uh, 17, not back in 1983. Long time. Then you have people that are diagnosed with some type of illness. Then you have aging parents. And then you have uh, folks dealing with you know, mental illness. Then you have addiction and, and, and alcoholism. And all these are chronic impairments that are not going to go away. And you've got to learn to live with them in some manner. And wherever you have a chronic condition, you have a caregiver, somebody who is involved with that individual, who is trying to care for them, trying to make sure that they don't go off of a cliff and go into something even worse. Is that where you are as a caregiver? Are you in that place right now? Do you need someone to kind of help you say, look, you know, hey, here's, here's a path to safety. I know I do. I've got to have that for myself. But what does that look like? And a lot of people don't even know what the vocabulary is. They're so busy sometimes uh, trying to give platitudes like, you know, take care of yourself or, you know, be kind to yourself. And, you know, really, that's the best we got? No, not on this show. We get down to the nitty gritties of it. And speaking of nitty gritty, here he is, the man you love, you've known him, you invite him into your home, the baron of the board, the salt of the sound, the earl of engineering, the man who is so tall that his shadow is a weather pattern. He is the Count of Mighty Disco, John Butler, everyone. I hadn't heard that one. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, people ask me what the weather's like up there, and, I, and then I, I tell them it's raining, and then I, then I spit a little bit. <laughs> Because they were you, were you ever a basketball player? And I say, of course I was. Were you ever a jockey? You know? uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, <laughs> how are you feeling? I'm all right. I had a pretty good week. I uh, uh, well, I, I got out to uh, got out into the wilderness uh, yesterday. Got got some hiking in. It was really nice. Very so, good. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Very good. Well, listen. Oh, by the way, if you want to be on the show, eight hundred. 688-9522, 800-688-9522. And if you want to follow along on Facebook Live, and, and I have a reason why you want to do that right now, go to Hope for the Caregiver on Facebook. Just go to Hope for the Caregiver. Click on and you can watch on Facebook Live. It's kind of fun because I was out of my yard before I came over here. Now I'm, I'm still dressed in, in a coat and tie this morning. I'm I was going to say, what's up? I didn't have time to change. Okay. Well, don't, don't go changing on me. Don't go changing. But I, I went out in the yard, and I was hitting the ball with the dog to, you know, give him a little exercise. And there's a truck driver that came on my street. And we live on Dead End Street in a kind of a, you know, a, a, you know where we live. And in an urban area. I mean, <laughs> but it's, it's um, uh, so we're, but it's a, it's a forested area kind of thing. But, but we don't get a lot of big trucks coming on the street. And he, and he came down our street and he turned into the place. They're building a house next to us. And I thought he was going to haul off the dumpster because he had one of those kind of trucks that would do that. Well, he came, turned around and came back. And as he rode past me, he yelled out the window, are you Phil Donahue? <laughs> I mean, really, that's what you yell out to people when they're in their yard with their dog? You know, I mean, yes, I have. You have the preacher white hair. I have blazing white, Arctic blonde hair. There you go. <laughs> and, and so, and you can see that if you want on Facebook Live. We'd love to have you follow along with us um, and uh, and join the show. 800-688-9522. 800-688-9522 if you want to be a part of the show. 
Uh, let's get right to our caregiver tip of the day. Our caregiver tip of the day brought to you by AERP of Tennessee, aarp.org slash TN, where they have a voluminous website full of things that help you as a caregiver today from, from you know, all kinds of financial stuff. They got a thing where you can just plug in your zip code, where you think you may retire, and how much it's going to cost to do so. I mean, they've, they've done all, a lot of this kind of work for you. Go out there and take advantage of this information that they have, aarp.org slash TN. Uh, brought to you uh, by AERP of Tennessee. All right, our caregiver tip of the day was actually inspired by a conversation I was having right after church today with a friend of ours. And they were expressing some very uh, some great frustration, John, at the healthcare system in particular. Um, she's trying to help with her father getting uh, to a specialist, but you have to get all these referrals, and then you have to get uh, somebody to give you the get an appointment to get the referral, and then the people won't get you in for like six months. I mean, they got a real problem here. Something's going on. Okay. There's, there's an event. They need some help with this, and it feels like she was just getting the runaround. And uh, everybody said, well, "Okay, we'll do this. We'll we'll call you know whatever." Here's some advice that that I this is what I've incorporated in my life. I try not to give advice too much. Here's what's worked for me. There you go. Okay. I, I don't like it when people give advice. You need to do this. I, I don't know what you need to do, but I do know what I have done and what works for me. And since I have 32 plus years of this dealing with 80 plus surgeries and more than a hundred doctors, you might want to use this. It's just, but I'm just throwing it out there. Never, ever, ever do I leave open-ended things with doctors or any kind of medical providers. When they say, well, we're going to try this. And I'm going to say, okay, that's great. How long are we going to try it? Ah. And they say, well, we're going to give it about three or four days. Is that three or four? And at the end of that four days or three, who's calling whom? What's the next action step? And it forces them into a situation where they have to give me dates and they know I'm going to call. So if you're going to say, well, we're going to give it through the weekend. Okay, are you calling me Monday morning at 8 o'clock or am I calling you? And it makes them a little uncomfortable sometimes. But you know what? Not so uncomfortable. They're going to come over to your house and help you with your loved one because that's really uncomfortable. And that's what we have to do as a caregiver. We don't have time for people just to give us the brush off. Now, that's what I've done. And I've learned this the hard way. And I've had this with a lot of doctors. You probably have too, John, but I've had, well, you haven't had with a lot of doctors, yeah. but, but, but you, you understand the concept. I'm, a, I'm not like on a first name basis. You know, no, we, if you get more, <laughs> if you get Christmas cards from more than six doctors, you're probably a caregiver yeah. and I do, but I, I don't, I don't allow them to just leave these open-ended things here. Now that may sound like a small thing for a caregiver tip of the day. It's not. I do that with my mechanic. I do it with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> What's the next action step? Okay, what's the next time? Do not leave this open-ended. And waiting, by the way, waiting is an action step. Waiting is a very good action step. Yeah, you're not saying how long are we going to wait? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but what, uh, but knowing the the, uh, the parameters of that wait. What what what's the trigger point? We're going to wait three weeks. Okay. Now, do I call you in three weeks, or do you call me? What, who's you know? And then you you pin people down, and so they you train people on how to treat you. You train them on how to treat you, and if they think they can give you the brush off and just get you out of the out of the uh, the, the queue, yeah, then they're going to do it. Your your challenge and your response is is to how do you best advocate for not only your loved one but your own time, your own peace of mind. You're not just advocating for somebody who has an impairment. You're advocating for you, and you're you're advocating for your own sense of well being. Okay. That's our caregiver tip of the day, brought to you by aerp.org slash TN, AERP of Tennessee. These folks, man, they have, they have uh, been with us right from the beginning. In fact, I got to tell you, and I'm going to give you a little preview of this, uh, because in the, at the bottom of the hour, we're going to get into this a little bit. But I was doing an interview with them right when we first started the show, and, and they asked me, you know, how, what about those people that don't even know that they're a caregiver? And, and that's when I lapsed into... If you have a professional carpet cleaner on retainer, you're probably a caregiver. 
you know, and they thought that was kind of funny. He said, I'm doing my best Jeff Foxworthy impersonation. They said, you ought to do that with Jeff. And so we ended up doing it. We did a, a real nice PSA with AARP of how to help people know that they are a caregiver. And I wrote an article the other day, John, and I put, I referenced that particular joke mm -hmm. and I titled it as God is my witness. I'll never have carpet again. And other oh. things I've learned as a caregiver. And you know what my publicist told me? What, Peter? <laughs> Someone is so... <laughs> He said, nobody under 80 is going to get that joke. <laughs> and I was like, dude, I got it. And I'm like, you, John, you got it. I did. You know, and, and I thought, and I had to change the title. So where'd you change it to? I'll tell you later. Oh, okay. Uh, but it's, uh, <laughs> you know, I was just like, I thought that was really funny. As God is my witness, I'll never have carpet again and other things I've learned as a caregiver. Yeah, that's a pretty standard line, you know. I thought so, but, you know, what do I know? Well, you're not a publicist, so no, I'm not. Yeah, but my initials, we, well, my initials are PR. Well, we also <laughs> we we pay attention to our. Uh, uh, you hire good people. Yeah, yeah. I understand. <laughs> I understand. But but it, it, you know, I thought it was. Funny. It's a professional eyes on this situation. I thought it was funny. Okay, yeah, As God but, okay. is my witness. <laughs> I'll never have carpet again. And and I will tell you, we did. I remember tearing up our last bit of carpet in our home. Oh, I bet and that we was went satisfying. to hardwood floor and tile. Mm -hmm. If it was up to me. I would tile the entire house and have a drain hole in the middle and just hose it down once a year. <laughs> Do you want a Jeep? Uh, yeah. I mean, no kidding, man. Uh, because if you got somebody in a wheelchair, any kind of mobility impairments or whatever, carpet is just not your friend. Man. I don't imagine it is. No. But anyway, that was the first you might be a caregiver if joke that uh, we came up with. And that was from my, my interview at the very beginning of this show with AARP and uh, folks at AARP of Tennessee. So that's our caregiver tip of the day is don't leave things open-ended, okay? That is, that is not your friend. This will not work well for you if you do this. You, you, you do yourself a better service if you start training people that, hey, look, we're going to, we're going to keep our time frames on this thing. We're not going to be you know, jacked around on this, all right? Now, look, that may sound like a small thing, do not underestimate this when you get in this system. The system is bigger than you, and it will eat you up and chew you up, spit you out. And so this is how we do it. This is how we fight back a little bit about that, okay? Uh, there's more to come, and we'd love to hear from you. 800-688-9522. 800-688-9522. How are you feeling? How are you doing as a caregiver? This is this is the question that we ask on the show. We want to know how you're doing. five seconds. We'll see you in a moment. I'm Gracie Rosenberger. After losing both of my legs, I have a clear understanding of the importance of prosthetic limbs. That's why I founded Standing with Hope, a prosthetic limb ministry helping workers in Ghana provide limbs for their own people all to point others to Christ. We provide training, equipment, and recycled parts from donated used limbs. I invite you to visit standingwithhope.com so you can participate. That's standingwithhope.com. Welcome back to the show for Caregivers About Caregivers, hosted by a caregiver. I am Peter Rosenberger, bringing you three decades of experience, not one, not two, not really even three, three almost three and a half decades of experience to help you stay strong and healthy as you care for someone who is not. And I've had the opportunity to make a whole lot of mistakes that you don't have to. And the learning curve is pretty steep. How are you feeling? How are you doing? You've got somebody in your life right now that you're putting yourself between them and even worse disaster. How are you holding up? 800 688 9522 800 688 95 22 if you want to be a part of the show hey listen i've got a feature here i want to just run by you real quick john i'm kind of surprising you i don't think you have any music for this and you don't need it it's okay unless you want to sing uh but it's a thing i'm trying to do for caregivers who are finding themselves for the first time cooking all right and if you're cooking and you don't really know how to do that or you're you're running into a roadblock and meals become tedious and 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 frustrating for you uh or if you've been a caregiver for some time or you're a really good cook and you want to tell a story about that go to caregivermeals.com caregivermeals.com and you can load a recipe there it's on our website caregivermeals.com you can load a recipe put in a picture of your loved one with you tell the story behind that meal 
and maybe a, a favorite verse or a poem or a, a song or a scripture, something that is meaningful that kind of sustains you through the day. And then you could be a source of blessing to another caregiver who is just pulling their hair out trying to figure out what to do at dinner time. You know, that, that that's what a great gift. I mean, you may have a great meal that you and your loved one like or that was special to you or something, but make it heart healthy. Make it heart healthy. Let's don't do gobs of uh, macaroni and cheese and, and butter and, and fat and everything else. As much as we love those things, it's not good for us. And and so what, I, what I'd like to do is help get caregivers to help each other cook and, and be a part of that community. And so when somebody's making that recipe, they're going to see you. They're going to see you and your loved one, and they're going to draw strength from that. And they say, wow, you know, so-and-so made this great meal, and here's a verse in Scripture that really sustains them in this. And I can do that same thing, and it's pretty easy to do, and it gives some, some variety, and it makes the mealtime not something to just look at with just uh, but more of, oh, look what we get to do. And that's a great gift to give to another caregiver, don't you think? Caregivermeals.com. Caregivermeals.com. All right, let's get right to our today's senior moment. I don't need your rocking chair. I don't need your rocking chair. All right, today's senior moment brought to you by our friends at Morning Point Senior Living and Memory Care Center. Morning Point Senior Living and Memory Care Center. This is something really important. I want you to write this down, put it somewhere. What is your circle of no? And I don't mean N-O, I mean K-N-O-W. Who are the people that know what's going on with you, with your loved one, with when, when something happens, who do they call? So if somebody, if 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 the your loved one, for example, is your mother, and something happens to her, who's the circle of no that gets the phone call from emergency personnel, doctors, or whatever? Does every is everybody up to speed? Does everybody know what to do and what their roles are? There's usually always a, pretty much standard a primary caregiver, somebody in the family who is the lead person. But if you're that individual. What happens if you're not available? Who's next in line? And does everybody know that? Your circle of no. K N O W. All right. Just take a moment to mentally think through that. Who gets the phone call? Now, why is that important? Well, we live in a very mobile society where people are just constantly on the move. And if they can't get you and something is going on, who's, who's the decision maker? And uh, if something happens to you, who needs to know? You know, do people know where you are at all times? And I'll give you an example of this. This is kind of, well, when, I, when we go out to Montana and we spend a good bit of time out there at Gracie's family place, we like to go out and, and snowmobile out in the forest. Well, let me tell you something. Nature is unforgiving and da- and nature is dangerous. <laughs> and so when I go out on a snowmobile, for example, and I'm with Gracie and she does ride and, and she's pretty good. I call certain people to let them know where we're going in the forest. And there's no lifeguard on duty here, if you know what I mean, where we're going and what time we're going to be back. My circle of no knows where I am and where she is at all times. That's the whole point of it. Do you have that same sense of security of what's going on? What's going on in your life? What is your circle of no? Who is looking after you? Who is watching after you or watching after your loved one in the event they can't reach you? Okay. Again, these are these are simple things that we do as caregivers, but it solves problems before they happen. It helps us be a little bit more out in front of this so that we're not constantly reacting, but we're responding instead. Hopeforthecaregiver.com. Don't forget about that caregiver meals. Okay. I really would want you to take advantage of that. Put a recipe up there. Why not share it with somebody that doesn't know how to cook? A lot of men out there being caregivers for the first time and they, they don't know how to cook. Let's, let's help them do that. Okay. 
All right, this is Peter Rosenberger, 800-688-9522, 800-688-9522. If you want to be a part of the show, we're going to go to the bottom of the hour. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. There's more to come. Healthy caregivers make better caregivers. That's what we're all about here. Like we'll right. Really? Really? You said fun, all right? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, all right. God bless you. All right, welcome back to Hope for the Caregiver. This is Peter Rosenberger bringing you three decades of experience to help you stay strong and healthy as you care for someone who is not. I'm glad you're with us. 800-688-9522. 800-688-9522. Douglas, in, uh, I don't know where you are, Douglas, but welcome to the show. How are you feeling? I'm just fine. I'm in Nashville. Okay, well, Douglas, you don't sound fine. Are you really fine? Yeah, I don't understand why you're, you don't have a waiting list of 15 to 20 minutes to talk to you because I need some help. Uh, with an aged parent, uh, he doesn't matter. In this case, it's my dad living alone. We lost mom after a long battle, and now he's living alone. And it's been two years since we lost her. My question to you is, I mean, we live in a house and close to him, and he lives in a house. But the cost is a factor. They're both paid for. But at what point do you decide to live in, to move in with them? Because you're keeping up with two houses. I mean, it's virtually impossible. I mean, constantly over there, a big, big lot, big, big house. Does not want to move out. Doesn't want to move in with us. How do you determine to move in with him or well, help? Well, does he want you to move in with him? I, recently, I told him, man, I just can't keep 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 keeping up two houses. And, uh, yes, he would. He welcome. He's oh, he well, he's home. okay so, with you moving in with him. Yes, and, and wife, my kids, and they're and, on and their own. Would so. that would that uh would you guys each be able to have your still your own independent space, you and your wife? Yes. Um, I think I think it's really since it's his house and all that. I think once you've gone through that hurdle it sounds like if he's okay with it then it's really up to you and your wife at this point your father's already given you permission hey this is okay i don't want to move and this if you guys are okay with it i'd rather you come here and if you feel like that's all right you know you can rent your house out or sell it and you can do that but that's up to you and your wife at this point i think the first hurdle was just making sure he was okay with it safety is also a big issue it's not just um uh keeping up with two houses it's his safety yeah, he's rapidly going downhill. I don't. I, don't, I honestly don't know how much longer it's going to be. He's going to be able to live there physically. He's a big man. I, mean, I think that. It, all right. If something happens and he goes downhill really, really fast, are you and your wife okay staying in that house then after he's, you know, gone down the hill that much, or maybe he has to go into a place where he could be cared for a little bit different? Are you okay with that? Yeah, it's fine. That's where we grew up. And all right. Well. I'll, it, if, put a plug in for your for your advertiser 101 mobility put in a chair oh aren't they great the now. <laughs> aren't they great yeah it, it, he could he wouldn't live there now without them. well and that's the whole point 92 percent of people want to age in their own home he's one of that 92 percent that's not going to happen just you know on its own you're going to have to have some help and so 101 mobility does help adapt the home so that you can do that and buys you some time on that and maybe buys you enough time but at this point, I think also his safety and security is going to be a factor. And if you and your wife have reached an agreement where the two of you feel, you know, at peace about this and feel pretty good about it, I'd say, you know, don't put yourself through any more strain. You already sound like you're stressed enough, Douglas. Take that stress off of you and consolidate your life and simplify it. Well, and I just want to sneak this one in. If you're in Nashville and you're talking about selling or renting out a house. This is the time. This is the time. <laughs> yeah, this is the time. <laughs> Um, so I think it, I think it's you and your wife just kind of hold hands and make that decision together and, and do what works for the unit. A lot of times that's the thing. It's not just what's best for your dad. It's what's best for the unit, because if you and your wife are not in a good place, he's not going to benefit from that. But if you guys are okay, then he, then everybody is, it's a, it's, as we say in South Carolina, what we have here is a win-win situation. And, uh, you know, and so I think that you could, you could have some extra income with your home. Your dad is safe, and you're not having to be stretched so thin. So, you know, talk talk with your tax advisors and so forth to make sure that you know it's not going to weird you out on weird you out on your finances. But it sounds like it's a pretty good deal. Yeah, we're not in any real hurry to do that. And I am a numbers guy. That's what I do for a living. But well, then, we really don't want to move over there. But again, that's why I call it. While we're stressed, we're just well. 
and what, what whatever can be done to take some of that stress off of you is a good thing because stress is not your friend in, in a caregiving situation. There's plenty of it, and and he's not and age is not going to necessarily make his situation improve. So you know it's not going to necessarily get better. You follow me? Okay. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. let's let's uh let's dial it back so that you and your wife are not so stressed that you guys can enjoy your life. It'll be a little different living with him there, but as long as you guys have plenty of independent space, and everybody's uh, agreed on the front end, you know, then I say, move on. Let's do it and simplify your life. You're a good man, You're Douglas. Awesome. Thank you for calling. I appreciate that so much. Marilyn, um, Marilyn, are you in Nashville? I'm not sure where you are. I'm in Delaware. Delaware. Well, Marilyn, how are you feeling? I'm feeling fine, thank you. Well, what's going on with you? Well, I just wanted to uh, share something. You said any comments that we could make that would help other people. And um, I hear you saying things about the Bible. And I just wanted to share some specific scriptures that I thought might well, give me one, but I want I specifically wanted that on that website to put in a meal and then share a scripture to go with it to help comfort other as we as we compile some recipes for family caregivers. But I'm always ready to hear a comforting word from scripture. What do you got? Okay, well it says Psalm one of says, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all oh. thy diseases. Good and word. And Psalm thirty thirty four nineteen says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. And um, we have authority through Jesus Christ to call those things that are in the kingdom that are already available to us because of what Jesus went through on the cross. And all we have to do is pray what the word of God says in order to access them. I think that's There's another. Go ahead. This is the last one then. Matthew twenty two twenty nine. it says, you do err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. Matthew twenty two twenty nine. Well, Marilyn, I appreciate you sharing these things with us. And uh, do you have somebody in your life that you've been caring for? Um, I did with that for my mother um, several years ago. And, um, I'm an only child, and I had to do everything. But um, How'd you do with all that? Um, um, God helped me realize at the time. I just didn't even realize. You know, it's like it, I, I was told afterwards that you wondered, how you did everything that you did. And I didn't wonder. I was just like one day, when you the next. but I'm an only child. And my mother was always there for me. And um, I, you know, she thanked me for caring for her. And I said, mom, how could I do anything else? So, well, that's a great it. word. <laughs> well, I, I know that's been an encouraging yeah. to folks that are listening today, uh, Marilyn, and I appreciate you calling to share that. And I thank you for listening and you guys behave yourselves up there in Delaware. Okay. Thank you. All right, we'll see you. All right, let's go to Meg here in Nashville. Meg, how are you feeling? Hey, how you doing, Peter? Oh, I'm just precious. How are you doing? <laughs> just precious. Yeah, I've <sighs> been running soup up and down the streets, and my disabled neighbors been bring it back and make my sweet husband his his lunch. And now, wait a minute. What kind of know, soup is this? What what kind of soup? Because yeah, I, yeah, I'm soup in, is I'm important in, to I'm John interested. and I both. I'm interested. <laughs> John and me both. <laughs> Beef vegetable with no starch. All right. Oh, really now, good. the and recipe for this soup, the recipe for this soup, <laughs> is it on my website yet? No. See, I came in late. I didn't even know what your topic was. So well, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you didn't say, life. Meg, I'm glad you didn't say I didn't know what you were talking about because most people do say that to me. I don't even know what you're talking about. All right. <laughs> Caregivermeals.com, Meg. Caregivermeals.com. Okay. And you can load up a recipe that's heart healthy because obviously you're making one without starch. And, oh, it's heart healthy. It's and, right, yeah. and you could probably substitute ground turkey instead of beef, couldn't you? Yeah, you could. Yes, you could. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you? But you could. And uh, But the point is is that you, you can make this very heart healthy. But what we're doing on this is I'm just collecting – there are a lot of – surprisingly, there are a lot of people – that are in the role of caregiver that are cooking for the first time and they don't know how to do it. I found myself in that position years ago and I would, Gracie would be in the hospital and I would call her up and ask her how to make green beans. And she would tell me and um, from a hospital bed, but that's no way to learn how to do it. Now I'm a pretty good little cook and, and I do all this and uh, but there are a lot of people that don't know it. And so they could probably use some help on simple things like oh, this, this soup. Is so easy. Yeah, it is so easy. You just open up stuff and pour it in. 
Yeah, it's so so it'll be fine. I'll put it. So care what care what is it? Caregivermeals dot com. But what I want okay. you to do is also put a scripture there or a verse or something that means something to you and maybe even share a picture of you and uh, your husband and, 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 you know, whatever. Just be an encouragement to other caregivers okay. who are just pulling their hair out because, you know, I mean, you've been doing this for a while, Meg. We're friends, and, and yeah. you've been oh, yeah. doing this for a while, and, and, and meal times can be exasperating, can't they? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm leaving town Tuesday for a couple of days, so I've got to make sure the pills are all counted out. I've got to make sure the meals are all ready for him to microwave. I've even got to call him on Wednesday morning, make sure he wakes up from his medicated state to start those pills in his breakfast and make sure he gets on so he doesn't miss his routine of the timing of everything. So you've really got to think ahead, you know, and it's it's hard, I know, when people, especially if they're just starting starting down this path. And, and, uh, and then another thing, Peter, is, How many times I'm sure we've all been through this, Lord, I don't want them living in this pain for the next 30 years. Please, you know, you you don't want your loved one to be hurting and to be, it's, oh my goodness. It's hard to watch suffering, isn't it? It's hard to watch it. it. What would you say to uh, somebody who's uh, just now starting in this road, you know, just, just now in this road and what would you say? Well, I would say don't forget to grab their hand. Don't forget to touch their shoulder when you're walking by. Give them a peck on the cheek, on the lips. Let them know you love them. Let them know that you're still the one you married or the one that that you are with. So it's nothing changed. I I wanted to talk to you last week when um Oh, with the Dr. Phil uh, thing. Yeah, the Dr. Phil thing. That was a bunch of malarkey. Well, um, for those who don't know, Dr. Please, Phil can, said on his show, he told a woman who was caring for somebody she had been in love with and he got hurt, became a quadriplegic or something to that effect. But he made a big thing, and he's the one that pushed this out, not me. I didn't pull this out. of him. He pushed it out on his website saying, you can't be a caregiver and a lover. And, uh, Meg, yeah, you would take yeah. issue with well, that, that, wouldn't whole, you? Oh, yeah. And because if you don't love that person, it is so hard to do to say, hey, I'm I'm done with this. This is it. This isn't what I signed up for. I'm out the door. I mean, you've got to, you know, God's got to give you the grace and the strength and and to to do it, you know, moment by moment. And that means being on call in the middle of the night. If they choke, my sweet husband had had a damaged uh, surgery. He'll choke. His throat will stop swallowing. All these things, and I've got to be on call. I work out of the house, and I've got a baby monitor that is on at all times so I can hear him when he calls out to me. And it's it's a long haul, but I tell you what, God will give you mercy, and he will give you joy each day. If you ask, you say, Lord, I'm at my wit's end. What do I do? And just thank him. I learned from my grandmother. You thank him, and you thank him, and you thank him, and that peace will come over you. And and it's it's not easy, Peter. Oh, my gosh, 30 years. Sweetheart, doing sweet. Well, Gracie. the problem is with so Gracie. You know. Gracie just she just can't keep her hands off of me. I mean, I swear it's just. <laughs> I mean, I'm just one man. I tell her, I said, Gracie, come on. I mean, I got a show to do. Everything else, just really, you know. Uh, but you know, it just it, it that's 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 part of the burden that I have to bear. And uh, <laughs> boy, I'm gonna hear I'm gonna hear about this one. <laughs> you don't hear about it. From me or from Gracie? I mean, look, all right, <laughs> pretty much from everybody at this point. Uh, but you know, but we've been married thirty-two years. I mean, you know what? And, and I would, I take issue with that thing with Doctor Phil. And and there are times when I got it wrong, Meg. When I I was try, I try to be caregiver first and husband second, and I I got that wrong. And you know, and I've made some some horrible mistakes along the way here. Uh, what about you? Have you do you feel like you've got it caregiver first? wife second kind of thing do you you find that kind of gets messes with your head sometimes i mean you're a lot you're a lot better person than i I am meg so i you know no stop that (laughs) i feel like it's just all in the pot and i have to continually ask god make it make it a clear recipe for me you know and and i do have to remember you know if i'm giving the coffee in the morning it's it's become a routine and i'm the type i have to have a i have to have a uh, which pills go in what bottle, and then the coffee goes down, then the breakfast goes down, and then then I sit with them while we watch Fox News for a few minutes, and I get up and go work, and it's um it's it's become a sweet 
routine and we laugh. Oh, a new person um, who may be going through this, remember to laugh. And no matter what's on the TV, if they want to watch it, they'll do the same for you. But just sit and enjoy each other's company. Well, and just don't forget to just be there. You know, Meg, that's, well said. Well said. Okay. Now, I want to see your All vegetable right. soup up at caregivermeals.com. I'll go put it on there. All I'll right. Meg, I'm well, proud of you. Thanks, you. You made my day. Thank, Thank you for calling in. 800-688-9522, 800-688-9522. This is Hope for the Caregiver. I am Peter Rosenberger. We'll be right back. I'm Gracie Rosenberger. After losing both of my legs, I have a clear understanding of the importance of prosthetic limbs. That's why I founded Standing with Hope, a prosthetic limb ministry helping workers in Ghana provide limbs for their own people, all to point others to Christ. We provide training, equipment, and recycled parts from donated used limbs. I invite you to visit StandingWithHope.com so you can participate. That's StandingWithHope.com. Welcome back to the show for caregivers, about caregivers, supposed to buy caregivers. Sorry, I get all excited when John starts playing. Just, you know, he does this thing, do the thing. Yeah. <laughs> as the Count of Mighty Disco. This is the nation's number one show for the family caregiver. Now you're understanding why. We're not about just, you know, patting you on the back and saying they're there and, you know, and talking about nursing homes, all this. Man, we are living life and we are living at large, and you can too. I've been a caregiver now for 33 years. Long time. And been through a lot of heartache with it. And I've learned that you can laugh. You can have a good time. Meg was right. Our caller from the last segment. Yeah, I was going to bring this up. Learn to laugh. But before you laugh, sometimes you got to cry a few tears. But we want them to be healthy tears, not tears of rage and despair. And and something happened this week. John, I got to tell you this. This was really quite moving. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. Okay. <laughs> I um. Uh, by the way, 800-688-9522, 800-688-9522, hopeforthecaregiver.com, or you can follow along on Facebook Live at Hope for the Caregiver. Um, Wednesday was the anniversary date of Gracie losing her right leg when she became an amputee for the first time, and it was on a Wednesday, the same date. You know, that doesn't happen very often, and it was uh, 28 years ago when I drove her to the hospital and she relinquished her right leg it wasn't something that they took from her she showed up and said take it off it was it was causing her so much pain and sometimes things in our life are so toxic they're so painful or so broken or so damaged that they're killing us but we're afraid to let it go and gracie made that decision she made it again four years after that when she gave up her left leg i'll never forget that i was 27 and she was 25 we were children john i have children that are older than that now. And I'm thinking, I cannot imagine them having to deal with that reality. And you know how she marked that day? She went to uh, the Metro Davidson Correctional Facility over here in Nashville, run by Core Civic. And there's a special program over there that Standing with Hope does. And Standing with Hope is the ministry that Gracie envisioned after giving up her legs of being able to provide prosthetic limbs to her fellow amputees. And she took some of her own prostheses you know, when you're an amputee for any kind of time, you're going to go through a series of prosthetic limbs. And she took some of hers that she no longer needs, the hardware and so forth, and took it over there and gave it to the inmates who then tear these things apart. Not tear them apart, but they, they disassemble them for us so that we can reuse the parts and the components and send over to West Africa for our work there in Ghana, where we've been doing this now since 2005. And it was quite moving to see her with these inmates and her telling the story of about all this. Because several you know, inmates change over. It's not a long-term correctional facility. Most of them are there for two to six years. And, um, but you have to earn the right to be able to work in this shop because they're working around tools and so forth. And these, are, these are wonderful, wonderful men who recognize that they've made some bad choices in their life and they want to do something positive. And here they are helping us recycle prosthetic limbs for standing with hope. And she held their hands. We stood in a circle, and she held hands with these men and sang that old Bill Gaither tune, something beautiful, something good. All my confusion, he understood. All I had to offer him was brokenness and strife, but he made something beautiful of my life. And she's sing, singing that 
on the very day that she became uh, an amputee, what, 28 years ago. All we have to offer is brokenness and strife. What do you got going on in your life today that you feel like is just brokenness and strife? I watched a young woman give up her leg and think, how can anything good come from this? This beautiful young woman, my wife. And then I watched her do it four years later with the other leg. And all the surgeries she's been through, 80 now that I can count. And I watched her hold hands with these inmates. Each of them had a story. I mean, you, you got a story. If you're in prison, you got a story. There's something bad that's happened. And she's communicating that same hope that she clings to. And together with those guys, we're offering more hope to amputees over in West Africa who can now walk. Why don't you be a part of that at Standing With Hope? Go out today at standingwithhope.com and see how you can help give that gift that keeps on walking. We could use the help with it. We're getting ready to ship a whole bunch of supplies this week. We could use your help with it. Look at our blogs. Look at the, the music that's out there that Gracie has sung and all the things that are available we put out there for you. And let's build each other up together. All right? How about it? Standingwithhope.com. Hey, listen, we're out of time. we got to go. This will be out on the website. We'll put the podcast out there. You can sign up for it. It's free. There's so much more out there we want to help you with. Healthy caregivers make better caregivers. And Standing With Hope is all about for the wounded and those who care for them. Be a part of it at standingwithhope.com. We'll see you next week.